you're you're not selling the jokes. You're selfish with your comedy, oh Lyle. I like to keep it to myself. <laughs> no, share the comedy. Let it out. It's my personal. Let comedy. it out. Your own personal comedy show. Just, I just don't like it when it falls flat because in my head there's like a cheering section like, oh my god, that's the funniest thing is going to come out it's of your mouth. It's not, though. And then just <laughs> looking at the blank stares of my friends. Hmm. That's why it just it gets shut down. That's why I have those like giggles where I'm like sitting there, we'll be talking, and then I'll just go <laughs> and say nothing. That's because the joke When is you're funny saying something here. funny and it's really funny, I'm laughing. I know. It's on the inside, though. And it's fine. <laughs> it's it's fine. On the cold outside, eyes. you're just like, shut up. Stop talking. Trust me, Tony. You will never say anything funny <laughs> enough to make me fall on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. It's just not going to happen. Everybody needs goals. Everybody needs goals. Uh, what time is it? You gonna start? It's, it's almost time to start. I don't know. Yeah, it's 10.02. 10.02? That's, wow. Okay, we're late. Or, I mean, do we need to start on time? That's enough. It depends. It depends on our viewers out there. How are we feeling are today? Oh, sleepy. Am I ready? I just do. I need a couple more minutes for coffee break. Oh, sleepy. I'm ready to do Travis lunch. Says, let's do this. Travis says, let's do this. Travis, Travis, is, Travis ready. is always like, let's do this. And Pagai is always like, whoop. This is like the same thing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Same excitement day oh. after day. All right, hang on. Let me take a sip of coffee. Hang on. Hang on. All right, have a good guy. I'll join you. That is the blackest coffee. My lord. All right, I'm ready. Let's go ahead. Let's go. All right, let's do this. Oh, wait. This pop up got right in my way. Right in the way. All right. Oh. Good morning, it's Defender X on Get Your Pain On. That's my intro. Dude, you had special effects this morning. <laughs> I know, I'm all in. <laughs> Up in the production value around here. That's, that's right, with my mouth. <laughs> my soundboard mouth. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday morning, 10 a.m., and this is Get Your Pain On, your weekly painting show. I'm your host, Dallas, and with me today on the second mic for the first time ever, Tony Concha. Yeah, I'm just I'm I feel like I don't have enough to do here. Your today. hands are all antsy because you yeah. have nothing to do. Yeah. I don't look so you're wiggling about. I'm, that was it. I had to adjust my chair just to feel involved. Like because you have no job to do. <laughs> no job. Talk. Yeah. Um, doing the job, doing the work, doing the thing that makes the whole thing happen is Mr. Lyle Lowry. How you doing, everybody? Real quick, I'm just gonna say Llama Juice, we do know the mics are on. We knew they were on earlier. Because we are super, super smart. We're professionals. Lyle Lowry peeling back the curtain here at Get Your Paint On. Yeah, that's what he does. Lyle's all about that. <laughs> Sharing the info. <laughs> Just dropping that info bombs. Um, also saw Lama Juice said that Thursday, or Get Your Paint On is his favorite part of Thursday. And to that I say, why not the favorite part of your week? I'm a little sad Just about go, that. go big. Go big. Favorite part of the week. That's what I feel. It's my favorite part of the week. Uh, our goal here at Get Your Paint On is to become a favorite surpassing payday. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a high, high, <laughs> high bar to set. Uh, but may not be achievable in our lifetime, but I want to build that infrastructure. I like that we have a goal now. So Get Your Paint On's new goal is to be the most, most exciting part of the week, even surpassing payday what if you only get paid once a month well that's already the well best yeah part of the that's week. already better Boom. <laughs> by default because you get we four, have to be better than nothing because you get right? four get your paint on but only one paycheck one paycheck automatically better everybody knows more is better hey lyle you want to know what color i'm painting with i was just about to ask you about that delightful color uh inferno orange so this is my defender x this is not the studio defender x um, Studio Defender X was painted by Mr. Jordan Lamb. It's already painted, so therefore we can't paint it on Get Your Paint On because it's already done. Um, so this is my Defender X, and this is my color scheme. It is the white, which you saw last week with the G-Tanks, which are the most adorable tanks in the world. They look like pissed-off Volkswagens. <laughs> um, I love those models so, so much. Uh, and this is my color concept. This is my color concept. This is my color scheme. So this is white. I did a um, 
I painted the whole thing with gray coat gray. And then I did a crazy mix. Um, if you know the retribution color scheme, you take marl white, underbelly blue. Um, I mixed that together. And then I added a little bit of Crixbane highlight, which basically makes the first shade of retribution. And I airbrush over top Xena style. And then I'll do one highlight, maybe some minimal shading, and I'll be done with the white. So very easy peasy um, color to, or uh, color scheme to paint. But I kind of want to get my orange blocked in here for the funds, just because also I just want to play with Infernal Orange today. It's, it's really a striking color. I've, I've been waiting for a really good orange in the line, and, mm -hmm. and this is it. It's the one. It's the, it's, it's the orange you've been waiting for, the orange you wanted, and the orange you deserve. <laughs> it, it literally <laughs> is the orange I've been waiting for. I've been waiting. Hopefully. For an orange like you. Hopefully it's what I deserve, too. You do deserve it. You deserve everything. <laughs> Lyle Lowry, my favorite editor of all time. Editor-in-chief. Chief editor. Editor-in-command. Whatever. Oh, I like that one. Editor-in-command. I'll shoot for that for my oh, next Oh, nice. Yeah. Editor-in-command. Mm -hmm. Don't we just do that? We just replace all director, chief, all that stuff with just commander. <laughs> Video commander, paint commander. Ah, oh, studio commander. Studio Dallas. commander. Like, I just got my new title. But <laughs> I'm 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 ready to give it up. <laughs> I'm ready to I'm ready to turn it in. So Mike Ledrew is asking, what is that mini? That is Defender X from Monster Apocalypse. Defender X coming to you this also, fall. Von Helliger. Uh, is saying that this model is going to drive some of his friends mad, and uh, I kind of I want you to uh, expand on that a little bit. I, I'm not sure what you mean, but I'm interested to know why it will drive your friends yeah. mad. Mad with envy. Mad with passion. Passion mad. There's a little hair on my Defender X. Defender X is not a hairy robot, so I gotta fix that. This, yeah, Monster Apocalypse, uh, new game coming this fall from Privateer Press. This is the Defender X. He's the guard uh, robot in the starter box for the Protector's Agenda. Um, so this guy will be coming to you shortly, soon, available soon-ish, fall. Um, his counterpart and nemesis in the... Destroyer's Battle Box is Gorgadra, and we might do a Gorgadra um, on here. Get, get uh, somebody to paint a Gorgadra. Maybe we'll get Brendan on here to paint a Gorgadra, because Gorgadra, Brendan's paint job on Gorgadra is super, super cool. He did mm -hmm. a really good job, and I love it. So, Sean Barnes wants to know uh, how tall is that big boy? Mixing medium for, what, what's the word? Oh, scale. scale. Approximately <laughs> a bottle of mixing medium tall. He is 80 millimeters from, uh, to the, to the tip, tippity tips of his wings. So he's 88 millimeters tall. He's a big boy. Uh, Monster Apocalypse is a big monsters, uh, big, big monsters uh, fighting big, big robots over a big, big cityscape. With little tiny tanks and with monsters. Let's. I want to show. I'm going to show a little, a little G tank. Yes. Show them There's the G -tanks. little G tank. Little G tanks to go with him. Oh, higher, 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 higher. There we go. Little G tank. Yeah. Look at that. See, sound <laughs> effects. That's what you want. Models, it's like a movie. Models that make you go. Um, if you ever play a game with me, any game, I make sound effects um and my favorite person that makes sound effects in games is ron cruzy mm -hmm. uh, you both know it's bad news though when ron starts making sound effects because that, you, yeah. that means you probably just lost the, when he starts making the sound effects. s just hit yeah. the fan that means he's released his his d-day ultimate weapon plan yeah there's a certain board game that we uh we play a uh, lyle Cruzy, uh, Tony and I, and Ron is all, well, Lyle's always the quiet, like methodical. That's why he's dangerous. Danger 
I, oh, it drives me nuts. Um, <laughs> but Cruzy, man, once Cruzy like starts like moving pieces, going, you're like, oh, oh no, oh, no, who's he moving towards? Oh, it's not me. Okay, cool. It's like this is bad. This is bad. Game over, man. And uh, there was a thing on here, Holt Mini Paint. The models are resin or plastic. They are resin. They are resin. Resin metal. Um, Defender X, not metal at all. Well, he's totally metal in this. Like, he's totally meta metal. Metaphorically metal. He's metal AF. <laughs> uh, Legion Harris wants to know, and I want to know too, Tony, oh, will man. Gavin Kyle be returning for this year's keynote you'll have to watch the keynote to find out oh my god i'm gonna find i'm out like a lock box. we're not gonna tell anything I about the I, keynote i don't do spoilers all my spoilers are kept deep down inside you I'm, that's true i'm gonna find out for myself and not tell anyone but it's like a pandora's box it all just kind of comes out at once just i will say uh I'm not going to give a spoiler, but I will say, I'll give a tease. Uh, everything I've seen for the keynote has been very cool. That's all I got. <laughs> I, well, I should, uh, yeah. I should hope so. I'm just sucking up excited. to you. What's that? I'm just sucking up to you. Yeah. <laughs> Jason Wegner asks, are the minis going to be pre-painted? Uh, I mean, I ain't painting your miniatures, buddy. They could be pre-painted by um, one of your friends, but they won't be pre-painted by us. No, these are can this is Monster Apocalypse is a hobby miniatures game. You convince Privateer Press staff to come to your house for brunch and paint up your minis, then they'll be pre-painted. That is not true. But that is not <laughs> that is not part of the purchase. I mean, there might be some staff that'll do it for brunch. It ain't me. <laughs> brunch party. There's a little panel line here. I got to work in. Boop. Yeah, it's a good thing I'm doing this orange before I paint my white, actually, because I can go back with my white and kind of touch up anywhere that I kind of screwed up. So. Uh, Rehab 110. The keynote is on Friday morning of Lock and Load. Friday morning at Lock and Load. Come to the keynote. See cool stuff. See things that you've never seen before. At the keynote at Lock and Load. It's so much cool information you've never heard. But you're going to want to. We're going to announce some really dope stuff at the keynote. What if brunch included Bloody Marys from Sean Barnes? Sean, I ask you, why would brunch not include a Bloody Mary? Yeah, what else is brunch? Yeah, brunch is literally Bloody, Bloody Mary Marys. Mimosa. Brunch done. Everything after that is optional. Um, okay, I'm still painting my orange on all the spots that I want orange. Um, I have a super awesome little color concept over here that Mr. Nate Fama helped me with because I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to put my orange, and he was... Our concept artist, uh, Nate, was able to go through and help me out on break and give me some good placements for my orange. Yes, I cheat. That's what I do. What else is orange? These rings are orange. Ouch. Um, there was a question there I wanted to ask. Uh, Steve Gibson asked, Dallas, did you build that base, or is that the kind of base he comes with? I built this base. So... If you look here, you can kind of see on the bottom, this is the clear bases that uh, Monster Apocalypse comes with. Monster Apocalypse comes with clear bases. Um, and that way you can see the game board through. Um, I'm kind of crazy and I want to do like cool, sweet decorative bases. <clears throat> so I'm decorating mine up. Um, I got some I-beams and some rebar and some pipes. Can and you show that rubble. a little higher on the screen? Oh, I'm sorry. That's good. Rip. So. Like that. There you go. <laughs> um, so I've decorated my bases. Um, the same with my little G tanks here. I've decorated my bases. So they got some little rubble and stuff. Because um, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's a hobby game, and I really like hobbying. And 
when I think hobby game, I think cool bases, and so, you know, I'm going to decorate my bases. It's fun. So, that's what these are. They come with clear bases. Cute little orange right there. Looks super dope. Little orange right here. Super dope. I'm going to deal with that inside panel. I don't know. I think this will be orange too. It's not on the color concept that I have, but I'm going to make it orange because it looks like it should be. Yet again, this is uh, likely a color scheme I will steal from you. Um, yeah, I've been really excited to get this color scheme. Actually, I've got two more ideas for guard color schemes. Um, one of them might be making an appearance as an individual single model, uh, just a Defender X. Um, I don't think I'll paint a whole army, but I just it's kind of stuck in my head, and I kind of want to get it out. Um, I still don't know how I'm going to paint my pterosaurs, though. Like awesome dinosaurs. Well, because I keep joking that I'm going to put, like, guard gear all over them, like, you know. Yeah. You like know. they got, like, guard gave them tech to. Yeah, because I, I want my agenda to, to match, right? Because it's all about that agenda. Mm -hmm. And um, I want it to match. So tying, tying dinosaurs together with uh, big robots, you know, I got to come up with a good concept for that. What do we got here? Oh, and why why do I have two monsters also? Um, because I'm going to paint my hyper form and my alpha form, and I'm going to paint them differently. Mm -hmm. How are you going to do? You know how you're going to do your hyper form? Is I that do. What you're figuring out? No, I do have okay. that. It's going to be white, except for there's going to be some changes. So I'm going to maintain the white base colors um, and the boiler black. Uh, that I'm using, and then just change some of those aspects. There's going to be some things different, and I'm going to. You can make them look like all powered up, like super, super size the glows in more places or something. Or? He's gonna. Well, the glow color is going to change, but also the style, like the approach to painting, is going to be totally different. What does that mean? Even you have to wait and see. Boneyard Painting is asking how many different factions are planned for the future release of Mompog. I got to say, I, I know the answer. I don't know what we can or can't talk about as I sit here. So if either of you know uh, if that's something we can talk about. I mean, you're going to see six More factions. than one? I mean, there's definitely six. Yeah, as Gearbox Grinds kindly pointed out, there are six already on the website. So. Yeah, there's six there on the go. website. Six on the website. Prepare yourself. Hex Omega asks, can we purchase monsters separately, like in blisters? Yes, you can. Yup. Little orange panel right here under his eye. That might change. I don't know. I don't know. It looks pretty dope, though. That does look cool. Well, the eyes are going to be like glowy blue. Mm -hmm. So, and then this this crown crest will be boiler black. So, that'll put that uh, glowy blue right underneath that darkness. And then, yeah, that'll look really good. Boo, boo, boo. Uh, Rikers Iron says, so excited. Mom Pac led me to PP. Yeah, boy. Stick around, because it's coming back. Yeah, there's more to see. Nate Brooks says that uh, his pterosaurs need GI helmets, and that he's already sculpted some in. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, I keep... God, I, I just... I love the idea of some of the pterosaurs, like, with, like, little guard gear and like give Terracon like an underslung ion cannon and people are like, but he has a breath weapon. And I'm like, he's got a sore throat. <laughs> I do like that idea of, of how to mix factions within your agenda. So it still looks like one complete cohesive force. Yeah. 
I mean, I think that's going to be the real fun part of uh, of seeing people building their Monpoc forces, right? Is that you know taking that um, taking those agendas and running with them, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Because trust me, I'm going to want certain models in in my guard, so. I think what I'm going to do today is just base everything. Does that make sense? Just base code everything so we can kind of see where he's at, and then I'll do the shading later and highlighting later. Sounds good to me. I know you know people usually like to see you do more. Yeah, it's uh, hard to do a lot in together. An hour. So there's only so much I can do in an hour. I mean, we should just do get your paint on all day Thursday. Mm-hmm. Thursday. If we do that, if we expand to an all-day show, I'm bringing my stuff in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm we'll not, just have cameras on all of us. Over here. Also, some some bananas and some Cokes. Some bananas and oh, Cokes? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Catering. Need, you know, some sustenance. There we go. I'm going to need bananas. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> all right. Nate made all of these little... Rockets orange. Rikers Iron wants to put tattoos for squad branding on his pterosaurs. I think that's a cool idea, that's too. That's a cool idea. And that's a definitely the thing. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to put some, uh, um, I think I'm going to put a stripe on him somewhere. I'm not sure. Maybe across the chest here, like going like this. Um, but also, I want to put like maybe on the leg here, like some serial number. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, I love stuff like that. So, someone asked. I can't remember where it is in the chat, so I apologize for chat's going not fast. Saying your I name. can't yeah. keep up. But uh, they want to know since this is your personal model, if you plan to do some battle damage on Defender X, maybe on like his fists, like he's just been pounding stuff over and over again, all damaged up. So that's kind of where I've been torn. Um, I love battle damage. I think battle damage looks makes things look more alive and real. Uh, but there is definitely that I also am kind of fascinated by a super sleek sci-fi clean look, um, which is not something I get to do very often. And I love that the guard is giving me that opportunity right now to really do that. I mean, look, uh, my inspiration for this is not subtle, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so super clean sci-fi is kind of in my head right now. So right. convince me one way or another. Should he have bowel damage? Should he not have bowel damage? Um, should I keep him super sleek, super clean? He is Defender X. Like, the boy's crest. <laughs> Shane Coates says, illustrative slash cartoon is greater than realism. Uh, I, I I hesitate to say greater. I, you know, obviously that's very subjective, but I tend to lean a little more towards uh, what I think is Shane's opinion. I I like it when things are just a little more, you know, um, illustrative and designy. I like it with more style than realism offers. So should I talk about? Should I, should I spoil my idea for my? It's up to you. Hyperform. You want to keep it to yourself, close to the vest. Or put it out there for the people. I'm, I mean, the, if you don't talk about it, you're going to be very disappointing right now. It's, well, that's what I do. <laughs> it is what he does. I mean, do we make a greater impact when you unveil it? Or are you going to be painting it on this stream, like, from the ground up? I don't, I don't know. That's the thing, right? It's like, I could, I could paint it on the stream. I mean, that's, it's, that's a lot of weeks it invested. Um. Like there's a lot of considerations to take in. There's other things I want to paint on stream. Like, or I can just do the next two months of nothing but Defender Xs, and y'all can just watch <laughs> me paint two Defender Xs. I'm gonna throw that out there. I'm gonna let you guys vote. What do you want? Boneyard Painting says a uh, simple way to convince you is that you're such a good painter, you can do it in a way that makes it look clean, but still looking like a badass. Uh, Boneyard, that's very flattering and nice of you 
it's also obvious. I don't know if that's enough to convince Dallas. That's also, just like that's just stating facts. Does anybody know if flattery works on me? The answer is no. It's a good question. I don't think so. I'm trying to think any times I might have tried to flatter you. Oh my gosh, look at this. Ugh. <laughs> Maybe once we see it all then it's all right, I'm gonna tell what my uh hyperform is. Do it. So I'm going to paint the hyperform in full illustration style. So what that means is that my hyperform will have um, very much some comic book style inking lines along the edges um, to make it look like an illustration. So it's a unique approach to painting models. And one I'm super excited to play with. Um, also, the glow color will change. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Should be pretty rad. Should be pretty rad. All right. Does he have any on his foot? Yes, this rim is boiler black. And I just screwed up. Battle damage away. There we go. What we got? Anything happening in chat? How, how's my chats? How's the chat? Uh, we just had to fix a camera thing real quick, so we're just popping the chat back on. Uh, we got people talking about... Uh, w there's a surprising amount of support for uh, clean clean lines on your model. Really? Damage. I was expecting battle damage to just win that one, honestly. Me too. I was just like, I just figured that was going to happen. You know, Rackers Iron says guard, they battle just do damage. a clean polish after every mission. That's what I'm saying, man. It's like, these guys are loaded, you know. They're the good guys. Defender Rex coming to protect Hex Omega is talking about a tutorial. That is on the horizon. Yep. One of the plans that we're working on. So to be determined. Well, P3 presents. We are looking at doing that. P3 presents painting your guard. P3 presents painting your other things. It's, it's all in the works. The wheels are in motion. The. The sands of time are flowing, ever growing, shifting, changing, evolving. Let's get through lock and load first. Yeah, <laughs> there's plenty to do between now and then. Uh, this little thing is the dark steel. I'm using boiler black now to darken these armor plates. That's one of the new colors, and it is fantastic. It's super good. I love it. Semi-metallic? Mm-hmm. Dark? Dark semi-metallic. Wonderful. So one of the things I notice, Dallas, when I'm watching you paint on video is um, probably something a lot of... Uh, newer painters struggle with is getting the, the thickness right, like the consistency right in your paint. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't look like you're, it looks like you sort of load the brush once, and you can work with it for a long time before you reload it again. Yeah, I'm I'm just barely thinning the paint. Um, I'm using a watercolor brush right now, so it's got a big fat barrel. Um, so that holds a lot of paint, and then I can just kind of tip tip in the water. I don't add a lot of water, um, especially on base coats, and I just kind of go. And then also, like a lot of times whenever you, you, you're painting and the paint kind of stops, a lot of time all that is is just in the tip, the paint kind of stopping, and you'll see my thumb. If I just do this, it'll break that, and I can just keep painting. Boop. Boop, boop, boop. Awkward video painting. Go. Go. Also, I touched the crap out of my model, which I used to be told a long time ago, don't do that. But as I've 
the, the more time I spend as my job painting models, the more I'd be like, you know what? I'm touching the crap out of my models. It's like, <laughs> well, it doesn't I, matter. I don't know if we talked about it before. I think there's, there's some uh, P3 Presents um, tutorials coming soon that actually have um, that show Brendan doing this quite a bit, but I know that you and Brendan both will you use your fingers for painting all the time, like for wiping stuff off or just for oh, doing yeah. things. Yeah, it's not so models are not just a a paintbrush only territory. Oh yeah, man. Like if I if I if I if I go like this, I'm like, ooh boy, I'll I'll, I'll real quick wipe that away mm -hmm. so it's not thick and I can paint over it. Like also that second brush which I don't have right now. Um, because I'm talking a lot, um, not in my mouth, and also I'm not too brushing. So that second brush is really useful for getting rid of any mistakes. I'm going to clean that up with white later. I'm just going to go ahead and darken this, even though there will be blue glow in there later. Darken that up. I'll paint the blue glow. So that needs to be cleaned up, but that's okay. Um, Getting a lot of emotes showing up in the Twitch chat right now. Emotes, I love emotes. Riker said he's gonna put LEDs in his hyperforms. I'm gonna be that. That'll be super dope. Uh, Pagani, thank you very much. <laughs> Chris Price, yes, this is Defender X. It's for the upcoming release of Monster Apocalypse. The new high octane miniature combat game from Privateer Press, Monster Apocalypse, a game where robots and monsters fight over a blasted city landscape. <laughs> Defender X. He's so dope. I saw um you know what? We we can talk about stuff. Tony was all like what I never know when we come in here. I'm always just like, and then we talk for an hour, and I'm like, well, I, we said stuff. And I'm like literally the the last person to come up with a plan. You're always uh, like, what's the plan? And I'm like, have you met me? <laughs> do I do I look like a guy with a plan? I Yeah, I don't need all the details nailed down. I, okay, never mind. I he like does. details. Tony but I need, I need to know what's happening. Um, so... I was looking at Zor Raiden, or is that where Zor Raiden? Zor Maximum? Zor Maximum. Zor Maximum. And he looks super dope. You should come down and see him. There you go. There's your spoiler for today. I think I saw some early uh, early illustration stuff for him. Well. Yesterday got sent to me. You should see the model. It's super dope. Yep. It's super dope. Where else? It's like for everybody listening, down downstairs in the studio. Uh, whenever I go talk to Dallas or or anybody else down there, there's just a, a table that just has miniatures and works on it. And so if I go down there, it's always cruise by that table and stop and linger and find new stuff. So it's just uh, awesome to be able to just go down and look and be like, oh my God, what's this? This is new. You're talking about my table. That's just I'm talking about your table, yeah. And then yeah. Dallas comes over and shows it off, talks about it a bit. My table that's covered in the new stuff that just gets into the yeah. studio. Yeah. It's one of my perks. It's like the coolest table. Literally the coolest table in the world. What? Boneyard Painting asks, so does Defender X listen to 80s glam metal dubstep or 90s thrash? I would say he listens to... I don't know. He listens to late 90s hip-hop. Late 90s hip-hop? I'm in. He's like... I was going to go dubstep, but is that too modern? Or does the retro put him in the right mindset for fighting? Yeah, I think it's a retro thing, right? He's like all retro. He's a retro bot. Get it? Retro bot. I said it. Does whatever. he admonish modern music, though? He's like, you kids. No, I don't think so. You don't know what good fighting music is. I don't think he's a music snob. No, he's real open. He's got a... He just likes what he likes. Like in the evenings after fighting, you know... You know, 
Cthulhu's. He's like busting Cthulhu's. Uh, he likes to sit down and, you know, maybe he finishes the evening with a little Mozart or something. I don't know. I mean, his main thing, especially when it's time to fight, is can you dance to this? If the answer is yes, he is all about that. And can you dance fight to this? And let me tell you, Defender X dances with his fists. <laughs> Oh, I like that. It listens to Queen. Uh, man, we're really going to paint these all? All right, cool. We're doing it. This isn't my color concept. You're just going with it. I'm Do it feels right. Feels Never good. be limited by your concept. It's true, but in this case, I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I asked for. Well... Like, yeah, I was, just, I was just really struggling with the placement of the orange, so I asked uh, Nate to help me out. He came up with something really sweet, so. If only we all had a Nate. That's true. He's right downstairs. That's true. We do all have a Nate. I, I mean, mean. It's the same Nate. I mean, all three of us. But not all of the viewers all, out there. Yeah, I mean, sure. they can post on Facebook and say, yo, Dallas, what do you think? Where should I put my blue? And I'll be like, I know where. I'll tell them. I also got to ask the studio thread on the Predator Press forums. Is there an Ask Nate thread? I'll tag him in. He's studio adjacent. <laughs> Literally studio adjacent. <laughs> oh, yeah, that looks good. That frames him out. Hey, like me now. They look like, uh, it almost looks like the fuselage of like a World War II fighter. Yeah, plane. that's what I was thinking too. The, I think that's what I like about uh, Guard is that they have a lot of that World War II beats in their design, and yet they are still like super cool sci-fi robots, right? I think that that's, like G-Tanks kind of feel like a future World War II design thing. Mm -hmm. Dallas Super Hamsta, which I love that name, uh, wants to know if uh, you can say what the the official base size is for the monsters units and buildings so that they can get on with making some nice buildings prior to release. I thought that was bases. Buildings? Yeah. We were making buildings. Yeah, we're making buildings. You don't need to make buildings. You don't need to make buildings. The buildings are made. We're doing the work for you. Is that? I feel like that should be. Uh, we'll see what happens. See, now I'm ignoring my color concept. Because I feel like this rim right here will be. Shane Coates black. demands a flying punch conversion with his jet blasters firing. Shane, you should demand that from yourself. And show us what you make. Yeah, show me what you got. I'll demand it from Shane Coates. There you go. Well, there's, we got a trifecta gauntlet. of demand for Shane to make a flying fist uh, Defender X. Tell you what, Shane, I'll send you a bottle of glue, a sculpting tool, and some putty and clippers. <laughs> so Sean is asking about that boiler black. He says, uh, how do you scroll too fast? He says, is that a metallic or just super watered down? Um, it is a semi-metallic. So it's it's not the same level of metallosity as, say, your cold steel or um, pig iron. It's much more opaque. Um, I've also watered it down for speed um, because I'm just kind of blocking in my colors right now. It's not real water. It's pretty water. Those speedy, speedy, speedies over top. Because I'll just do two coats real quick. See, like that, and get that full opacity. So it's just water down for speed. But it is a semi metallic. Someone named Zane Kemp says, looks good, pops. And uh, I think that's a, a knock on your age. I don't appreciate that in chat. So Lyle has banned him. 
I, I think he was talking to me. I'm not sure. I mean, he's probably talking a lot. Just call me Pops for real. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel old. It's not what he said this morning before I took him or before he left for school. He was just like, are you really going to paint that today? <laughs> like, dude. He's like, dude. <laughs> the bad thing, like you, the, you, you can hear the conversation, conversation right? <laughs> The bad thing is you can't hear that conversation between us, right? <laughs> <laughs> Some head shaking. Did he give me an SMH? No? Oh. He's banned. He can't do anything now. <laughs> oh, he <was> actually banned. <laughs> Nailed it. Senior grounded. <laughs> <laughs> I can't ground him anymore. Oh my gosh, this is taking forever. You guys are probably bored. James Meredith wants to know how many pieces is that Defender X kit? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So he's a set of legs, torso with the shoulders. Arm, arm, head, backpack. And he's 100% American made resin. So he should go together in like five minutes. Um, I mean, I cleaned mine up and uh, glued him together in a rel really short amount of time. Like he wasn't, he's not hard to do. Um,. Like the big thing is he does have, being resin, he's got the traditional resin uh, injection ports um, that we're, you're familiar with if you've worked with resin before. Um, so you gotta clip those down and shave them. Um, <clears throat> did, did I do a video on cleaning up resin? I did, didn't I? I just can't um, remember. Not, not, we've done cleaning models but I don't know it specifically so maybe we'll do one Resin of those ports? maybe I can't remember what video we'll have to anymore. go back and look I don't know if that was exactly what you're talking about if we had that in there we've definitely had one for cleaning a model uh, maybe I'll do a resin one uh, because we got some big resin kits coming out with the monster apocalypses um, but yeah it's really easy you just use the back of the blade and you shave it down it's super simple it's not hard to do at all Hex Omega wants to know, are we getting resin plastic buildings? The one in the starter kit are paper. What was that? I missed that. So, uh, Hex Omega wants to know, are we getting resin or plastic buildings? The one in the starter are paper, but hefty plastic ones would be lit. In the, w w you're getting resin buildings. Uh, the starter comes with a, we did a, well, Schick's going to do, Schick has an insider coming out today. Uh, going over the uh, starter box contents, and it'll go into the building. It's a the the one that comes in the starter is just a, a little cardboard cardboard uh, starter building. Uh, you get I think six of them I think something like that. Yeah, it's multiples. It's not just yeah. one. Yeah, and uh, those are for your starter, and then but they're but we're making resin buildings, and uh, they are super dope. Hey, Hot Mini Paint just ordered new paints. Cannot wait. Yay for ordering new paints. Thank you. New paints are always good. I love new paints. It's like my favorite. Show thing. us what you paint with them. Yeah, tag us on Facebook with uh, hashtag play painted. Right? Hashtag play painted. I believe that's correct. I think that's right. Uh, hashtag play painted. And so we can see your stuff. Or Twitter. Whatever your social media outlet of choice is. Red Death says, Hey Lyle, can the No Quarter Prime online coupons go out today? Please. Please. Please, Lyle. Lyle. It's going to take a little more than a please. Thank you. 
<laughs> Lau, you're the harshest. See, he just comes straight out and says it. He's yeah. like, that ain't enough. You got to up that bribe a little bit. Yeah. Make that stack a little higher. That's why I love Lau. He's just like, <laughs> he is not playing. He's just like, really? That That's how you're doing this? That, that's that's what that's how that's that's how this is going down. That really. A little shout out from Steve Gibson. Thank you, Dallas, and everyone at Privateer Press for your guys' amazing work. And these live streams have helped me with my painting tremendously. That is all I need to hear right there. You just gave me the motivation to go to work another day. Because it is all about. My favorite part about my job is helping other people. Um, helping somebody achieve their painting goals is the top of my personal goals list. Of my three personal goals, it is the number one. What do you think of that? How's that for a Defender X alt color scheme? I'm digging it. Awesome. Nate Fima seems to like the color placement. Way better. Yeah, thanks, Nate. It was uh, it was my idea, and um, Dallas uh, really really ran with it, took it, and made it his own. I mean, it's it's it was collaborative. <laughs> so, uh, as Dallas was saying earlier, that's uh, something that Nate helped him come up with. So, yeah. So uh, pat yourself on the back, there, buddy. Yeah, I was like, okay, I was like, I want I want my main color to be white. And I want my glow to be blue. And I want to use boiler black. And I want to use inferno orange. And I knew I wanted some sort of super sci-fi orangeness to it. But I just had struggled with the placement. So uh, Nate was super sweet and came in and helped me with my placements. Because sometimes, like, you know, being creative is... Um, some, it, it helps sometimes being collaborative in your creativity. Um, now we're getting into some Tony talk. Like, <laughs> like a lot of times, like being creative is such a solo endeavor, right? It's just a solo thing that you do. But um, a lot of times, it's working together is really where some really good collaborative or really good creative things come out, and especially here in this building. Right? Yeah, absolutely. How many things in this building do you do as an island? Like zero. Zero. Literally zero. Like you're like, this is my idea, and you bring it to like three other people, and then everybody like hashes out the and refines it, right? It's no one's an island uh, when it comes to like uh, creativity. Yeah. Well, even like even if you're if you're doing a project that that is primarily headed up by you and has very little involvement with others or is entirely personal, getting feedback or having other people weigh in on that project is important at points because um, even if you think you're moving in, in a right direction, there have been many times where I've had uh, like an idea for something and moving forward with it and you know talking to people in the building and all of a sudden you're in a position to have to defend why you think that way and by defend i don't mean like gripping it to the death it's just people are challenging your assumptions and your thoughts yeah on what you're doing and it's forcing you to think about well why am i doing it that way why is that important what's necessary out of this and sometimes it it can solidify what you originally thought and other times it makes you do a 180 going, oh, that's not the best way to go about this. So, Yeah, I mean, it's sometimes, but it's also like sometimes you just don't see the same things that I'm yeah. going to see, right? I'm right. like, it's it's all of my experiences are going to infer a different uh, viewpoint. And so getting that second or third person to look at what we're doing is really important. And I mean, this goes back to uh, like the, you know, like, like I talk about for P3 Grandmasters, right? Like the P3 Grandmaster uh, painting competition, the best part about that is not winning. The best part about that is getting feedback and getting, you know, crit criticism. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you come to a show and you bring your painted miniature and you make, 
me or Ron Cruzy or Brendan take a peek at it and we're going to see stuff that you might not have seen or you might not have thought about, right? It's not we're right and you're wrong and you should, it, but it's a, hey, look at this. Have you thought of this? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's super, super useful just getting more eyes on projects. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be a better painter, basically I'm plugging my painting competition. <laughs> super subtle super subtle that's what I'm all about right everybody knows how subtle I am Should Rikers Island is talking about get people to write it down their ideas and they'll often flop as the vision isn't there that's, I mean that's actually that's true. there's a lot of truth to that there's um, when you're uh, there's a book talking about writing screenplays where it's like you need to be able to distill your story into one line like it doesn't matter everything that's going in there but if you don't have that one through line it's going to be hard to hang everything off of it um, so approaching any project just knowing what your what your core of it is what everything else needs to adhere to to work yeah you're um that's uh they, they call that a log line and um when people are writing articles for no quarter for example uh, particularly like Hunger for doing a new game or something like that. And he, he has an idea for a game. I'm like, what's the log line for that game? And if, uh, if he has like a good idea that he can express in a line, then I know he has a tight idea. Mm -hmm. It also helps for like figuring out like, how do we, how do we describe it in terms right. of like, what is, what is this thing that, that we're going to be including and selling to people basically? It's the elevator pitch, right? It's yeah, it's an elevator pitch. pitch. Now I want to, oh my God, now I'm trying to think of like how to describe some of my favorite movies in one line. It's really a fun exercise, actually. Yeah. It's like, how do I describe Jaws in one line? Because there's so many different approaches to mm -hmm. the core of that. Well, and then, it, you know, it also, it works in the reverse, too. If you have ideas and want to do something, but something doesn't seem to be working, going back to that idea of a log line or, you know, a some other analog of that idea, which is just simplifying what the core of it is can help you bring it back around and build off of that. K-I-S-S. It's, you know, it's surprising how often that works and, and is the solution to a problem and simultaneously how often it is ignored and how you get to uh, having too much in the first place. I, I definitely try. I'm definitely one of the types of people that always try to like go for this like as soon as somebody talks about something i'm like in my head i'm immediately trying to simplify it as quick as possible yeah because like it's, it's just like if you can't if you can't convince me in like three or four words then then you have nothing <laughs> you have nothing do 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 All right, you know what? This is done. I'm putting it on the table. That's not true. <laughs> Looks like could be ready to go. I mean, it's missing a color, but what color? Oh, the blue. <laughs> the blue. <laughs> I was like, "What? Wait, what color am I missing?" Oh, I yeah. can hear Nate screaming on the other side of the screen. The blue. Hey, Nate, the are blue you there? I put in that uh, concept. So, I was curious. What do you think? So, like, there's some little bolts down here on the bottom. I'm thinking those should be silver, not white. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So basically, whatever your concept, uh, well, it doesn't show in the concept because we only did a front. So I, th I think this is, should all be metal, don't you think? These big screw heads that like inner working underneath stuff. That should all be like that, right? Cool. Thanks for agreeing with me, everybody. <laughs> I mean, I agree with you. I thought we were waiting for Nate. To yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to see what Nate says. Uh, you see how I waited for Nate there? Nate says no. With a lot of O's. Oh, well. Uh, 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 uh. Hot uh, Holt mini paint. That is one of my favorite lines from that movie. I love that. 
I got Jaws quotes going on chat. This is like <laughs> the best thing in the world. Ooh, I see a tsunami. My favorite natural disaster, tsunamis. Boneyard Painting says, there's so much opportunity for OSL on Defender X and he can't wait for it. I agree. I think, I mean, obviously there's so many ports you could do glowing if you wanted. Uh, Studio One is loaded with glow. Um, mine will definitely have chest piece, knee piece, eye slits. Uh, there's some little lights here in his little earmuffs. Um, the studio one has like these little areas lit. These little they're like, like almost like little holes in his chest, in his uh, shoulders. I'm not sure if I'm doing that yet. Um, oh, he's got a little headlight too on his noggin. He's like a coal miner. So I'm not sure if that's what I'm gonna do. We'll find out. <laughs> coal miner X punching his way to the vein. Just <laughs> right through the rock. That's what they were originally built for. Rock. That's right. <laughs> He's just all the Defender X, the Loretta Lynn of Monster Pot Clips. There you go. I'm gonna pretend I understand that reference. <laughs> Dallas likes to laugh at me when I don't know stuff. Uh, Loretta Lynn. Well, I know the name. Her most popular song was Coal Miner's Daughter. I was gonna I was gonna say she's probably a country singer. That would have been my guess. She's absolutely I'll say after singer. the fact. Absolutely. But that is what I thought. Singer. All right. Just little boop boops. Little boop boops. I'm paying these bolts, Nate. Deal with it. I think they'll look really good as uh some silver sticking out from the uh sea of white around it. That one's tricky. You see I'm coming into that one? I'm going to come in from the back side. That's always like I'm always afraid I'm going to touch something I'm not supposed to touch with my brush, but I got there. Nailed it! What do you plan uh, to do for your highlights on each of your colors? So for the uh, Boiler Black, Boiler Black will be highlighted with Cold Steel, uh, shaded with some, uh, I'm going to mix some Thamar back into Boiler Black for the shade. Um, the Inferno Orange will be shaded with probably Scorn Red, maybe Kato Red highlight, or Kato Red base, and then highlighted with some Heart Fire mixed with Inferno Orange. Um, the white will be highlighted with Maro White, um, and then maybe shaded with some, I'll do some dark lining with Great Coat Gray or Iron Hole. Uh, the cold steel here that I'm painting on right now will be shaded with Galvanized Steel and then a darker mix, maybe just some straight boiler black. Also, I don't know if this orange can reside here. There's no channel line, so I'm not really liking that division. Um, So I might just make that, I might get rid of that orange across the backpack there, which is unfortunate. Yep, that orange is going away there. It's going to go on the line lower for ease of painting because this is actually part of that turbine. This is all turbine, so I don't want to paint the turbine orange. Uh, the galvanized steel, anyways, will get, uh, or I'm sorry, the cold steel will get galvanized steel and then boiler black. Uh, and then after dull coating, we'll get highlight with like um, Quicksilver. I just gave away all my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that ring, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull that ring into orange instead of the ring that was above it because you can see how this actually comes together in this part of the turbine. Gotcha. Sabian As Asher asks, Dallas, how would you suggest doing yellow metal? Yellow metal? Yeah. Uh, 
go to Privateer Press Presents and find the painting yellow. Oh, you want it metallic. Um, gold? gold? Right. Yeah, my, it was like, my, like different yellow than gold. metal is gold. My thought would be, yeah, gold. if you want to do like a bright, like the brass balls is great. You also have a good recipe for that. I do. Your, um, your gold look tight. I do. I, yeah. I do. Um, like if you want it to be a really bright gold, uh, I do uh, quicksilver as a base. And then I do yellow ink over it and then shade it with, with a, like a, a brown wash. Uh, yeah, you could use like Cossite flesh wash for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be really good. Uh, yeah, your that your gold uh, recipe is really sweet. But yeah, it's just cold steel or quicksilver. Which one? I use quicksilver. Quick I use like the brightest. So you just bring it all the way up. Yeah. Yours like quicksilver. Mm -hmm. Yellow ink. Yep. And then do some shading with Cossite flesh wash. Right. Yeah, it's like a super yellowy uh, uh, metal. It's super cool. Super cool looking. Sometimes you put the covers in the wrong spots, and that's okay, because that's what paint does, is cover other paint. Be real. Just get rid of that. So what do you want to finish before this episode is over, Dallas? God, it's always you that's trying to end the show. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Tony has other videos to make. Tony's like, all right. I got videos on videos on videos. You are working on all kinds of videos, videos that people are going to want to see. And where are they going to want to see them, Tony? Um, you're going to want to see most of them during the Lock and Load keynote. So come to Lock and in Load in June and watch Tony's videos. Tony put a, whole, a lot of hard work into these. If you come to Lock and Load and watch it live, you can see me in person. Wearing headphones. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm in. I'm buying a ticket. <laughs> you wearing headphones uh, and you fretting. Fret, yes. M much fretting. <laughs> it's the Tony at Lock and Load experience. Yeah. If you've ever tried to talk to me at Lock and Load in the past, it was, uh, I apologize if I was full of fret at the moment. Full but I do, I do enjoy talking to people at Lock and Load. Uh, that's going to be mine and your ska band name, Full of Fret. Full of Fret. Mm -hmm. Double entendre with guitars there. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. Fret-tastic. All right. So that is all but a little bit of – so there's still some cold steel that has to go on on his arms here. And – on the back side of these uh, rocket rockets, because he has rocket fist. He literally has rocket fist. I love it so much. So there's just a little bit of cold steel left, and then that's all my base colors placed on my Defender X, and then I can start uh, the shading and highlight process, and then go into glow. So what do you think of my color scheme? Also, I'll put they're at the very, very end, serial numbers and some sort of stripe. I, it, does he need a stripe? A stripe where? Like, in my head, I'm imagining like a stripe, like an orange stripe breaking this. But I kind of don't want it. I kind of just want to do some like serial numbers right right here, right? Yeah, it was something to make it less uh, symmetrical. Yeah, because I don't like a dark. I, I don't like symmetry. What about like a dark gray stripe? I think if you did like an orange stripe right there, it would be too much. But like a blue or just like a dark gray, something that is there and breaks up the shape, mm -hmm. but doesn't, mm -hmm. but kind of fades into the background a little bit. All right, well, we're it's still more exploratory then. More exploration is needed. I say we go to lunch, get some fried chicken, and talk about it some more. <laughs> You, sir. Tony with the good ideas. Always with the good ideas. When it comes to lunch, Tony has the best ideas. That's just fact. You can't even deny that. <laughs> I, don't, like, I don't know how you would. <laughs> empirical evidence. I've gone to lunch with other people, and their ideas are never as good as yours. That's fair. <laughs> Do 
Gearbox Grind says, this has been a great morning. You know what? I agree. I think we like this, this is morning. this is also the first time I've been. Uh, I think you're on the get your pan on last week, Lyle. But this is the first time I've done a live stream uh, for get your pan on with you. Yeah, where we've been talking together. Although Lyle and I have done a lot of live streaming together, most of the live streams from Lock and Load, War Machine Weekend over the years have yeah. primarily been Lyle and I running the the command center. It's true. You guys are like the command center guys. I totally excited to get back on live stream because that's that's such a fun job in fact on the convention schedules the live stream positions are named tony and lyle Th yeah those are those are job titles on the uh the sheet so if you are doing uh the traditional tony position then you are tonying tony. and if you're doing the traditional lyle position you are lyling it's like shimping shimping <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's familiar with that term one internet cookie to you. Nate Famous says he's got some ideas for this uh, extra color thing once you come out of your painting cocoon. Painting cocoon. Who says that? Nate? Nate did. Okay. Oh, I am in the painting cocoon, aren't I? Yeah. The warm, um, light-filled womb of the painting uh, studio. Studio B. We should call them cooler names in Studio A and Studio B. Like, you have cool names for your backup drives? Yeah. Uh, studio, our studio should we have do. cooler my, names. Yeah my, yeah, my video backup drives have cooler names than our studios. Studio B is now called... We had the downstairs studio. We dubbed Studio Prime. We never call it Studio Prime. No, no. Studio B is Arcane. We just call it Arcane. But it's upstairs. Yeah. It's fine. Um, All right, we can come. We can keep. We can't call it Urcane. Urcane is is a uh, backup drive. We got to call it something different. We'll come up with something. We'll come up. Um, the chat. What do you think our studio names should be? We should go a little lore meta. Uh oh, I like where this is going already. And simultaneously confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. It's getting better. <laughs> this is Lylan. <laughs> so one is the void with a big V. Oh, and the oh. other is the void with a small v. So, yeah, okay, so you don't pronounce them differently. No, right. you would. You'd be like, "Where are we? Where are we shooting today? Where are we doing that episode? Are we doing it in the void? Or in the void?" <laughs> that was an exclamation point, not a capital. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's the first time I ever said it, and I don't know. Like, you would have to be like, "How do you say big v?" and then drop it down after that. It can't be it, void because that's multiple. V's. So is it the void or the void? Well, which is and you which? have to give the look. The, oh, the eyeballs. The, the, the okay. void. Okay. Hey, Tony, um, do you want to film today's episode in the void or the void? See, I know which one he wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is obvious to us. This is obvious to us. All right. I guess we're done. Oh, Nathan Howard, what about one of those little hazard triangles that warn you that there is a laser in operation? Dude, legit. That's a, <laughs> I want, it's just going to say this um, face this way toward enemy, like right across his torso. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there is definitely a laser in operation on Defender X. All right, I guess we're done. All right. Oh man, I wish Lyle had just like stopped it right then. That'd have been like it just killed time. But it. Now we gotta now we gotta keep going. <laughs> People on the other end just be like, wait, wait, it's actually done. <laughs> well, we gotta do our little wrap up. You don't know, you're that? already muted. You don't know. There's no audio feed. That's all right. I'll still I'll do the wrap up to <laughs> Give myself. Give us let's do our debrief. So our debrief, ready? So thanks for joining everybody uh, on Get Your Paint On, your weekly painting show here from Private to Press HQ in Studio uh, Zerkova Two. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm still working on names here, guys. Leave me alone. <laughs> um, thanks. Uh, this is Defender X, the new game for uh, the new a uh, new miniature for Monster Apocalypse, the new game coming out this fall from Private Press. Super dope looking robots, super dope looking monsters fighting each other. Um, next week, I'm going to continue on my Defender X. Uh, maybe just bring in my high performed Defender X, so we can see what he looks like when he's painted up in the uh, illustration style. 
Remember, every Tuesday is the weekly rumble. We can watch um, private press staff duke it out over games of War Machine, Company of Iron, and um, some no quarter games, and who knows what else? Who knows what else? Uh, every Wednesday is the Dev Hangout at 10 a.m., and that's where the development team talks about the developments in development. Sometimes a special guest, Lore Meisters, Matt Getz, and Doug Seacat. Was Matt on yesterday? Matt was on yesterday. Talking about yeah, Exemplar. Talking about right? Exemplar. Dope. And, of course, every Thursday, uh, get your paint on, which you just watched, so you know it exists, so you keep knowing it exists, because it will never leave your brain, because you're going to share it and like it and follow it and tell all your friends about it. Dallas is inside your head. I'm inside your head. So until next time, goodbye, Tony. Goodbye, Dallas. Goodbye, goodbye Lyle. Lyle. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Boo. Goodbye, everybody, from Defender X, Protector of the Earth.